Okay, it's uh, it's half past five, so this is the last talk of today. Um, I'm, it's me standing between you and, and, and beer, uh, so uh, I'll, I'll, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I can keep you all engaged. So um, I've given technical talks in the past. Uh, this is my sixth FOS for G. Uh, this year I'm actually not, this is a completely non-technical talk. Um, hoping that there'll be some people out there who have got ideas and things that they want to pursue and you may be not sure if you should do it or not and hopefully this is going to motivate you to do it. That's my, that's my intention anyway. So I'm Mark Valley. I'm the founder and CEO of Address Cloud. Um, we provide software services to the insurance industry, uh, predominantly in the UK and Ireland, but we've got users around the world. We've got about 400 users in the US as well using our services for essentially ensuring uh, complicated risks, so things like wildfire risk, flood risk. Um, and uh, yeah, we are a, we're not an open source company, we are a closed source company, but we're built on open source technology. Um, but we do uh, give back as much as we can, and we're gonna continue to do so. So uh, I've got a quick theory, um, which I'd like to test out, that I think there's two types of people at Phosphor G. Um, I think there are uh, geographers who've fallen into IT, and I think there's IT people who've fallen into geography. So who would classify themselves as a, as a geographer that has fallen into IT? Okay, great. And the IT guys who've become geographers? Yep, okay, me, me included. So um, you're both, okay, okay, great. So um, yeah, I mean, for me, uh, I did geography at school, I hated it. Um, I, sh I shouldn't tell that to the customers. Uh, but the only thing I can remember from five years of geography is this. Any guesses why? <laughs> um, but now I run an open source, uh, well, I run a company, a geospatial company uh, based on open source technology. So how did that happen? Uh, well, I started my career in 2000. Um, coming out of university, I got picked up by a big consultancy. Um, we weren't really doing much cutting edge stuff. So my first project was developing uh, an application in COBOL which uh, if anyone knows, that was a language written in 1959. This was in the 2000s, so not very, uh, not very kind of innovative. Um, but then uh, a requirement came up from the customer to be able to start taking into account geography. Um, and at this time in the insurance industry, people were doing geo, you're using GIS, but it was always after sale. So it was always, we've insured all these houses, okay, are we screwed or not? And um, what it was doing was taking that and making that in the point of sale process. And I got involved in that and I became the, uh, uh, the geo guy essentially in my company, helping insurers out with all these kind of things that they worry about. So there's a lot of geography in insurance. I always thought insurance was kind of, kind of dry, boring industry. It's actually super interesting, particularly from a GIS perspective. Um, so, you know, they're gambling their money, they're gambling our premiums essentially on, uh, against uh, geographic risk. So being able to deliver that insight to them is super useful. So yeah, um, but for me, Geo was kind of, I was as a, as a, as a consultant, as, a, as an advisor, uh, I wasn't really getting into the, my background in the, in the past was in software development, but in that particular role, I was a pure business consultant, helping with integration, and I didn't really know what was happening under the box. It was a, uh, you know, it was a black box solution for us. It was not something that we really got to touch. So, um, but I spent, I spent about 10 years, I kind of carved out quite a good niche there, going in and working with insurance companies and advising them around technology choices and, and, and ways of replatforming and, and, and essentially transforming their business using Geo, but all the time without really being, getting into the nitty gritty of the, uh, of the software. And then, um, yeah, one of my bosses in 2011, we were working with a large vendor um, who were based in California. Uh, we got sent out to a conference in San Diego that one or two of you might have heard of. Uh, and I thought it was awesome. You know, I went along, I saw some incredible stuff. I really, in terms of the use case and the technology, I know this particular organization get quite a lot of stick here. Um, but, you know, they, they do great tech and they, they do have some awesome user experiences and use cases are fantastic. So, yeah, completely blown away. And I came back and I was, I was so excited. I was a complete fanboy. You know, I'd been, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd had the kind of the white light flashed at me and I was like, wow, this stuff is awesome. We need to do everything that I've just seen. Um, but this is the kind of response that we got back. So both from within all the organization and talking to our account manager, it's like, no, are you that thing we showed you? It looks really cool. Yeah, but no, it doesn't actually work yet. Okay, great. Um, yeah, you guys, uh, a huge, uh, you've got enterprise, we had an enterprise license agreement, 
but this particular gadget was an acquisition and it wasn't a core part of the platform, so it wasn't included. So it was going to cost us a bunch of money. And, uh, well, it also it depends on this other kind of third-party component, and you need this, and we haven't got it, and it's too expensive. So pretty disappointing, you know? Uh, really, uh, I was a fanboy. That, that whole kind of process of being sent there was a complete waste of time. Anyway, fast forward on two years, and uh, yeah, we saw this thing called Phosphor G that came to the UK, and it was in Nottingham, and it wasn't too far. And I kind of looked at it, it was going to cost a couple of hundred pounds to go, and I got approval to go. I had to sleep in uh, university halls of residence, which was quite interesting. Uh, it had been 15 years, I think, since, that, since I'd been to uni. Um, but I went, and it was great. It was Phosphor G. Anyone went to Phosphor G Nottingham? Yeah? Graham at the back? Yeah. Uh, anyone here who's their first Phosphor G? Okay, fantastic, welcome. Um, so this was my first Phosphor G, and it was great. The presentations, they were people like me. They, were, they weren't these kind of robots who'd been rehearsing their presentation to within an inch of, their, uh, inch of its life. They were normal people and talking about stuff that I could relate to. And uh, there wasn't much whooping. If anyone's been to San Diego, there's a lot of woo, yeah. And uh, there was none of that, thankfully. Um, and yeah, <laughs> thank you, Max. So, and uh, the great thing was, not only, I didn't have to wait till the end of the, pres of the presentation, I could be sitting there as someone was presenting something cool and download it, and there it was, it was working on my laptop, which was so, uh, it was uh, incredible. You know, I came away with a complete uh, Phosphor G uh, advocate. So, uh, yeah, pretty happy. Um, and anyway, so I kind of went back to my day job, and we were working at the time on a, on a huge transformation project for this insurance company. It was a four-year piece of work, and uh, Katie was one of my users. I said, Katie, look, we've done it. What do you think? And it's uh, pretty disappointing. <laughs> so don't ask the users what they think. Bad idea. Um, but I wanted to drill into it. And I was like, OK, we've spent all this money. We've spent millions. We've spent uh, four years building this thing. What don't you like about it? Um, well, after that. Uh, and it turned out that the thing that the, 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 she was happy with the overall platform, but the thing that was letting it down was the UK uh, geocoding. So, you know, we thought pretty straightforward, turning addresses into coordinates. Um, but unfortunately, the software that we were using, we just upgraded that as well, and it just really wasn't cutting the mustard. It wasn't doing the job. Uh, and it was for the, the, the reasons there, really. Um, so my brain started thinking, OK, can I do this? Can I? Can I do something better? Can I, you know, there's a lot of, there must be solutions out there, but can I build something better? Um, so, so I did. Uh, at this time, I was traveling a lot. I was uh, on buses and trains and, uh, and planes a lot. I had, a, had some free time, and I was, so I sat there and I built a prototype. Uh, I demoed it to my boss, and my boss said, okay, that's it's, it's awesome. It's streets ahead away of, you know, of any of the competition, uh, but you're one guy on your own, you know, so, uh, you know, we can't work with you. And also, you're an employee. You can't, uh, we can't take something that, that you've built in your spare time and, and get rid of this huge vendor. So I quit. Um, uh, I partnered with another company, so uh, you know if you're looking, if you have an idea for a product that you build and you want to sell that to a huge organisation, don't be don't be scared. What's a good way to do is often is to try and find another small company who are already supplying services, who are already a, uh, uh, an approved solutions provider. Um, so this company, they uh, I showed them what I'd done. They said, yeah, that's great. And Warren, he's not here today, but he's at the conference. Um, and uh, together we put together a, pro a proposal. Uh, and ultimately, we went and competed against some of the biggest names in the industry. There were five companies competing. Uh, we went through a year of procurement and very rigorous testing, and we won it. So we won a three-year contract with a huge FTSE 100 company, uh, and so Address Cloud was born, and that's really how we started and, and how we started the business. Um, now, and I've been to Phosphor G every, ever since. So every Phosphor G I go to, I always get something out of it. I mean, uh, sometimes I'm kind of sitting there a bit hungover in a presentation. Somebody will say something that may be nothing to do with what I was thinking I was going to get, but I always get something out of it. Um, so I thought I'd just do a quick uh, run through of my Phosphor Gs and, and, and what, my, what my takeaways were. So Phosphor G sold in 2015. At this point, um, I was unemployed, so it was quite a, uh, it was before the, we were awarded the contract, um, paid my own money, got the plane out to Seoul, and was super glad that I did. Um, I, my, my, I arrived, and the first thing I did was I had a, took a workshop with Paul Ramsey and uh, learned uh, PostGIS, which we use 
uh, at the core of everything we do. Uh, it's where all our data comes from. Um, so that was incredible to be, you know, to be in a room with the guy who, uh, who basically created the software teaching you uh, and for like, what, 100 bucks or whatever, you know, that's, that's just incredible. So well worth doing. Um, yeah, we, uh, I was in a drone workshop. Um, so anyone who was in Korea, we, we did a drone workshop. The Koreans were so worried that we were going to take our crappy drones and send them to the North Korea that they sent us a military att attaché. Really serious dude with a hat and then another young guy with a clipboard. And uh, we kind of saw them starting very, very nervous. But after a while, we just kept on, we just couldn't get this thing off the ground. It just kept on crashing. So uh, that was quite amusing. Uh, we didn't start a, a third World War III, luckily. Um, and uh, the, I guess the biggest takeaway, both, well, generally, because he's six foot three, uh, is this chap here who I met in the drone workshop, who's now my partner and uh, Address Cloud CTO. We met at Phosphor G in uh, 2015. So um, Phosphor G Bonn, uh, following year, a few of you guys know uh, you went there. I did a, 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 I ran a workshop there on Elasticsearch, and uh, which I'd kind of been up all night before sweating over, and I think it went down okay. I still get some questions about it, which is good. Um, uh, yeah, I presented, so I did a presentation in the most intimidating room I've ever presented it in my whole life, and got to sit on Helmut's uh, specially reinforced, very large chair. That was quite good fun. Um, I, I learned and st that's where we come across vector tiles. So that was the first time I really heard about and was aware of what a vector tile was, which again now in our, in our product, they are a key part of our product is uh, our vector tiles. And uh, yeah, I got, I got a contracting gig working at MIT. So that was pretty cool. Again, at the time, you know, we'd signed our first customer. Um, but actually the first challenge, you know, the challenge, some people say, oh, once you've got your first customer, that's great, you know. Uh, you'll be made, but it doesn't necessarily work like that, particularly with the insurance industry where sales cycles are very long. So I found myself with one big customer, um, but of bills to pay. So this was awesome. So I went to work um, and helped Tom out at MIT, uh, did a two-month two project uh, working on Indonesian flood uh, mapping and uh, re-architecting their flood mapping platform. So that was great fun and uh, strengthened my relationship with Tom. So I was working for Tom at the time, and now Tom's working with me. So. Uh, Things have changed. Uh, went to Boston in 2017. Again, another great conference. Uh, and I gave a talk on serverless. I thought, great, I've got, we're doing this thing called serverless. No one's going to have known about this. And there were like 20 talks on serverless. So, uh, but it was still, it was good practice, you know, and, uh, and great to really understand. And I think, you know, the fact that if it's just you doing it, then, you know, it's maybe it's something that could be interesting, but everyone's doing it. It's indeed a thing, and it is the future. Um, yeah, got to go and see MIT. So I think for me, Phosphor G is as much about um, as much about what you learn in the workshops as your kind of downtime as well and new experiences. And uh, yeah, I got to go and visit MIT and, uh, and 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 live out my Matt Damon fantasy. Um, and then also we were sitting in towards the end of the conference, sitting in a workshop, um, and it was a T Rex workshop, I think it was. We looked at understanding how vector tiles were served. And actually got a light bulb thinking, wow, we can do this ourselves. We at the time we were using Mapbox and Mapbox were great, but their commercials weren't really working for us. Uh, they had a kind of minimum plan for any commercial use, which was as a small company, it was hugely expensive for us. They they now no longer have that. But we came away and we realized that, that we could do it for free. Um, and then finally, Phosphor G last year. Uh, I, every year I get to the end of Phosphor G and they announce it next year. And if it's somewhere that's really far away, I think, oh, there's no way I'm gonna go there. And then couple of months later I'm looking at flights and then I book but I uh, actually took the whole family last year with me and we did a uh, camping trip in the Serengeti which was awesome uh, if you go camping in the Serengeti though just be aware that the campsites don't have any don't have any boundaries or any fences so those lines that you go and see uh, they're, they're, they're just outside they're just like you and a piece of canvas in between uh, but thankfully uh, I still have two children um, <laughs> so <laughs> Um, and I convinced Tom to come and work with me. So uh, Tom started working with me last year. So it's coming up to a year's anniversary of, of us working full time together. And it's been fantastic. Uh, and Tom learned what a cloud optimized GeoTIFF is. And I, I won't pretend to explain if I un that I understand it. But if you want to go tomorrow at half past two, Tom's going to tell you why they're awesome. So I guess to conclude, in terms of a takeaway, really, um, when I 
started and I used to work before I was I ran the company I used to look at uh, and evaluate proposals from companies like me and at the time open source you just you know you'd get laughed out of a boardroom with open source that's no longer the case you know people are looking they're the customers they've gone through the whole pattern and going back to Jody's talk earlier now you the the the, uh, the procurement people are becoming more and more smart and they understand what this is you know um, don't be afraid to challenge an established market. So, you know, if you're a small company and you're going against big companies, uh, Vincent mentioned that he does, we certainly do. We find ourselves at the moment in some very huge procurement uh, processes where we're a two and a half man company and uh, the next smallest has probably got 250 people. Um, but, you know, this, we're, we're winning, you know, this, 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 this thing's happening. Um, I don't know if people saw very hot off the press like two days ago, Pitney Bowes uh, sold their software business. So if any, any map info users? No. <laughs> There's maybe one. There's probably only one left. Um, but, uh, but they sold the business and uh, Stephen Feldman, who can't be here this year, um, put an interesting tweet that, uh, that he saw map info. He was previously the I think UK or European managing director, that he'd basically seen them being squeezed out by simple cloud-based alternatives. That's us. That's companies like us and Vincent's company. Um, you know, we're out there, and and, and you know, we're, we're really, we're you know, we're really making a difference. Thank you. <laughs> so I guess to conclude, you know, if you've got a good idea um, and you've got good market fit, I think that's probably the key thing is having good market fit. Then persist, and you will prevail. Um, don't be afraid to pivot. So we started as a geocoder. We're still a geocoder at heart, but we've added in uh, data enrichment, um, data pre-fill services, location intelligence, and we've built our own mapping platform. So, you know, follow the money. You know, follow what your customers want because if your customers want it, there'll be other customers who want it as well. And yeah, attend and support Phosphor-G. You know, it's a fantastic community. Um, we try and. Uh, we try and kind of open source bits of what we can. We both give presentations every year. And I'm pleased to say we're sponsoring Phosphor G UK in Edinburgh this year. So anyone uh, who's a UK or, or can get to Edinburgh, it's a fantastic city. Uh, it's always a great conference. So come along and, and we'll see you there. That's everything from me. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm happy to take any questions. If everyone's thirsty and they're thinking about beer. Um, okay, yep. It's uh, end of September. Uh, we haven't got it on there. I think it's the, tw anyone know what Phos Phosphor G UK is? I think it's the last, I think it's the third week in September. Yeah, but it's uh, it's a different, it's a very different event, Phosphor G UK, but uh, it's, it's obviously a lot smaller and kind of quite UK focused, um, but it's very well worth attending. It's, it's, a, it's a good event. Oh, 19th to, 19th to the 20th. Thank you, Jody. Yes? We've got, so our, our biggest customer, they're still our biggest customer in terms of the size of their organization, but our biggest customer by, by billing now is another insurance company. So uh, it's, it's doing really well. We've, we've doubled year on year for the last, we've doubled revenues year on year for the last three years. Um, and yeah, we've got quite a nice portfolio. We've got, We've probably, we've, so we've got two large insurance customers, a few smaller insurers. We've got like some pet insurance company in Ireland who are using us, you know. And we've also uh, diversified from just insurance to uh, logistics uh, and some smaller organizations as well. Um, but at the moment, as I say, the sales cycles are very long. So we're in RFP processes with probably three or four global insurers, like huge, huge com companies. Who knows? We, maybe we get it and, or maybe we don't. If we get it, then next year we'll, we'll be hiring. So... Uh, we, so we provide um, so we provide uh, geocoding. Uh, so we provide a geocoding service. Um, we provide a location location intelligence service. So we'll basically give essentially if you if you're if you're buying insurance, you put in your address. Behind the scenes, the insurer calls us and we tell them where the address is and we tell them everything we know about it. So we'll tell them the flood risk, the subsidence risk, how many bedrooms it has, how many bathrooms, what it's made of, what's the roof made of for that particular property. So they can then make a, a decision as to whether they want to write it, and if so, how much. Uh, and it helps them differentiate between competitors who may be just doing the same thing but at a postal code level, 
So it's it's really giving kind of hyper hyper kind of hyper accurate uh, risk risk assessments. All kinds. So we use it's predominantly commercial closed source data. Um, so we work with third party data providers in the UK and or globally. Um, and we also take open data and we cleanse it, enrich it, and combine it ourselves. Um, so in the past, we've always kind of, our approach has been kind of data agnostic. We'll, we'll tell you where the property is and we'll tell you all of these different opinions about that property. But we're in the process at the moment of kind of curating our data and saying, well, it's in a flood area, it's in a bad flood area, but we know from this other data source, for example, that it's an apartment on the top floor. So actually, your competitors won't write it because they're taking a two-dimensional look. Um, but we can tell you it's on the top floor, so you know, go ahead and write it. The flood water's not going to get that high, you know. So we're starting to starting to do that kind of work as well. Any other questions? No. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for listening to me, and uh, enjoy your evening.